really uh, civil engineering and civil engineering technology is, is focused on students that are um, uh, mathematically inclined but are outdoor inclined. The nice thing about it is that the uh, curriculum that we're using um, and, and looking to, to bring forward to the student uh, includes uh, almost all of the elements of civil engineering. The uh, program that we're talking about has the element of surveying as a sort of a, a basis to the uh, real process of uh, what a civil tech most often does, which is taking that information into a computer and then uh, drawing that, uh, uh, drawing all those elements that come off of those that electronic data and making it into a uh, a map or a picture. Making it possible then to know the existing conditions of a particular property uh, while being able then to uh, take that information and uh, now apply something new to it. The uh, civil technician uh, needs to not just be uh, able to put that down on paper from a civil engineer, but has to be thinking like a civil engineer and say, hey, you know what, that's going to be a conflict, or mm -hmm. uh, they need to be thinking critically. And those things are not necessarily uh, what was true of the, of the old drafts person. The old drafts person would have gotten that stuff handed to them, say, here, uh, get this on paper. Now we're going to be asking uh, and this is not just present, but this is future. The civil technician is going to become much more involved in the design process. The civil technician uh, will be used for uh, doing estimations on that, uh, for how much does it cost to get this built, uh, so that the owner knows uh, how much money it's going to cost to do a particular project. They're going to be involved in the uh, in uh, making sure that these uh, documents are are uh, uh, adjusted correctly from review level to construction level. They're going to um, potentially be heavily involved in setting of standards for their, their particular shop. So we're talking about a sizable amount of um, uh, capability that the civil technician takes with them into the workplace. I had the opportunity to become a mechanical engineer, which I could have handled uh, in uh, all of the facets of mathematics and all that, that wouldn't have been a problem. The problem for me was that I never got out of the office. <laughs> I didn't like that idea that I was going to be sitting in an office uh, for my entire lifetime. And so um, civil engineering allows you to get out, you get to see projects, um, and especially as a technician, which I'm not wanting to... Um, uh, make it a, a prejudicial term, but but a jack of all trades. There's a certain sense in which they do a lot of uh, different kinds of things within the period of their workday. If all you know is the computer sitting in front of you and you try to disconnect yourself from the world, you don't want to be a civil technician because most of the shops that are going to come back are going to expect you to have a not just a broad skill set, but a deep skill set. Okay? It's going to have uh, it's going to have other facets than civil engineering or civil technician type activities in it. Oh yeah, very much value added and and so um, the other side of it is that this is uh, because of the way this particular program is being set up, we're cross training. We're cross training between public and private too. But as you get more experience, you're able to take that information that you have and literally become a project manager. Literally managing the process all the way from survey through the uh, point of construction and uh, being able to uh, bring the forces to bear, whether that be other technicians or surveyors or engineers or others, you can actually uh, uh, become a team leader, if you will, uh, within the organization in which you work. And so we will have elements within the curriculum that deal with that specifically, with the desire for those individuals to step up.